you feeling? No, what up, baby? It's macho time, baby. You feeling better now, man? Yeah, I'm in a better position. We can talk now. No problem. Yeah, Service yeah, is nice good. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, nice brother. Clear, my dude. How are you? Everything good, man. Finally back in Dallas. Finally back in Texas, relaxing for a couple of days. And I've been, I've been on the run, man. I've been on the on, on the on the COVID hustle lately. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So been traveling, doing a lot of things. Trying to put the work together, man. You know, looking for the payoff, 2021. You know, staying busy. So you making a comeback? Yeah, we're looking at that. You know what? There's a lot of names out there. Mike Tyson, the Roy Jones came back. That opened my eyes up. You know, because you know normally when you get to a certain age. It's hard to get, you know, license to fight. Right. You got to take tests, and they make it difficult on, on us athletes after we're at a certain age. So this exhibition opened things up for us to continue fighting, continue doing what we love. So I'm going to get back in the ring soon, but most important, getting back in shape, man. That's the hard part, you know what I'm saying? Right, The right. grind, that's the hard part, but the fight is easy. I'm more the fight, but the <laughs> grind is tough, man. Exactly. So listen, we got Macho Camacho on the show, everybody. So listen, a lot of people know you, but a lot of these youngers don't know you, you know? So yes. introduce yourself. Tell them where you come from, man. All right, Camacho Jr. come from Spanish Harlem. Um, my father's the great Hector Macho Camacho. So you already know, I was born with a target on me. I come like some of your guys from the streets. But we feel it was impossible to get out. But now, nah, my brother, dream. Shh, aim for that moon. Shoot. If you miss your Mundo stars, you just grind and work, man. Exactly. It's that easy, man. I'll tell the young boys, because the young boys in the streets, they said my generation, we were smart. But this generation now, I mean, they they, they, they smart, man. They good on their gadgets. Yo, hustle. If y'all go hustle in the streets, y'all go hustle in that corporate world. It's the same kind of hustle. It's just a legit hustle. Get on your grind. We against the eight ball. Pick those pads up. Walk around like a G. Exactly. The real thing is the one that's in corporate America, man. I mean, yeah, us, us in our days, man, those gangsters in the streets, they respected. They helped out the community. Back in my day, when I was growing up, and I seen those gangsters, the boys in the block. They took care of the block. They took care. You couldn't mess with nobody on the block. Nowadays, there's no respect. We have respect for the ladies, for the females back in our days, the outpour days. You know, they all respect in the days in the streets, man. Yeah, Nowadays, yeah. they lost it. These G's are wrong, man. They lost these young kids. It's about teaching them how to be a G. Not a gangster, but G's and gentlemen. Exactly. So what you know about the Alpo days, man? I heard you say that. You know, I'm from Spanish Harlem, man. My all the close to Alpo. I just go back. I was going to school with them back in the days. I was being the back of the, uh, the mopeds they had back in the days. <laughs> I mean, you know, I come from the little errors, man. We come from the fast New York time. Back in the 80s, New York was New York, man. That's right. Talk about it. That's right. The Rico days, man, yeah, you have to respect the people boys out there. You couldn't go out there and disrespect anybody out there. Nah, we had rules, man. We had guidance. Yeah. That was the good old days, man. Exactly, man. You know, back in the day, snitches got stitches and all that. You know? Now it's cool to snitch. Yeah, <laughs> they got T-shirts and all that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So life coming mm -hmm. up as a little kid and being your – let's talk about your pot for a second, man. So he got a, um something on Showtime that went came out a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, we put together the documentary, the Macho document, the life of Hector Macho Camacho. Um, we was hands on on it. I was particular, and my family was. But when it came out to the business side of it, it didn't come out the way we wanted to. But the story's out. It's a hot, it's a hot story. It's a hot documentary. We getting high ratings. And it's the life of Hector Macho Camacho. That's right. That's right. Long overdue, you know? Long and when somebody overdue. passed away, people forget about him. So my goal is to keep Macho Man alive. He's always going to be alive amongst people from New York City, from Puerto Rico, and boxing fans. He, he's never gone. But, you know, it's just like my job as a junior, as an inheritor, to keep his light name out there. So that's what I did. I got every draft. He put the Showtime documentary together. Exactly. So when you was a kid coming up, Macho Camacho, son, you know, how, how, was the, how was the street treating you, man, the people in the neighborhood, man? <laughs> You know, I come up from New York City where it's rough, man. Right. You have to earn your respect in New York City. Right. I had my respect because everybody knew who Macho Camacho was. I used to walk the streets. I was at people pointing, oh, it's Camacho Jr. I was famous from young. Yeah. But on, 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 
With the pros come the cons, on the flip side. Right. I come from Spanish Harlem, 112 Street, Jefferson Projects, where it's rough at. They don't care who you are. You come out to a junior, Dougie Fresh, son. I don't care who you are. You got to prove yourself. So I got picked on when I was growing up. Are you come out to your son? Yeah, let's see. Let's fight. Let's see if you good. Are yeah. oh, you come out to your son? Why are you living in the projects in a pissy hallway? You come out to your son and your father find an HBO. You lying. I just get picked on. You don't have to prove myself. But you know what? I don't regret nothing, man. New York is who I am. It's what I made me. Exactly. I gotta keep my ten toes upon the ground. I know about that hustle, about that grind hustle that New York teach you. Because in New York City, if you hustle, you don't eat. That's just point blank, man. Real talk. Real talk. So, so when did you first get interested in fighting in the ring, man? You know, it didn't happen until I moved to Florida in 1990, 1994. But, you know, growing up in, in the courtyard where I grew up at in Madison Avenue, we used to slap box. That was the thing back then, that slap day. box. So I had to prove myself, slap box the big boys. That was kind of good. Yeah. It was in my blood. You know what I'm saying? I was quick. So I just get busy with the hands. I remember when I was, I was like 10, 11, 12. I had to invite the kids upstairs to my, to my hallway to this box. I had a pair of gloves. That's how I just get over. In the streets, cool. They come upstairs, come upstairs to the box. Let's go box upstairs. I just get over there. But that's when it started kicking in that, you know what? Well, maybe I should take boxing. But it didn't hit me until I got to Florida. When I got to Florida, I got to Florida with my mother. That's my father for Chavez. He had the biggest pay day of his career. Mm -hmm. So he gave us some money. He didn't buy us a house. He gave us a down payment for a house. So we moved to Florida. And when I got to Florida, it wasn't like New York City. Where in New York City, we had basketball leagues. We had football leagues, two and touch. We had things to do. In Florida, it wasn't like that. There was no leagues and everything. So my mother said, you know what? I ain't going to leave you out here in the streets. At home doing nothing. Let's go to the boxing gym. My mother pushed me to the box to become a boxer. I don't become a boxer. I didn't think about boxing. So I didn't like that limelight. I lived in my father's life. I didn't like that life. Right. You know, it, 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 a lot of groupies, a lot of, you know, I said, nah, I don't like that attention. I want to do something else. My mother pushed me to boxing. And that's what I do best. That's just my blood. So it became easy for me. There it is. So did you fight, like, how did you start? Did you fight? Golden gloves, did you get to go through all that? Or how'd you go? Yeah, I started amateur in 1994 as an amateur fighter in Florida. I lost my first fight, but then I came back and won 58 fights straight. I became the number one fighter in the nation at 139, going to the U.S. Olympics in Atlanta in 1996. I grind hard. I, I grabbed my own identity. I didn't live on my father's name, even though I was getting challenged on my father's name. I was getting stepped up the open classes, fighting boys with 30 fights. I only had like four or five fights because of my name. I defended myself, and hey, I made it to be a number one in the amateur, number one in the nation. I went there nice. I did my job. My father was a Golden Glove champion. I made it to national Golden Gloves. I made them become number one amateur fighter in the United States. Wow. So then I can tap my chest. It ain't just because I'm come out to someone's door is going to open. Nah, I open my own doors as an amateur. Right. You know the difference between you and your father that I saw coming up? Your father was fast and flashy. You was nice, but you was to knock dudes out. Yeah. You know what? He didn't knock a lot of dudes out. You was knocking dudes out. I, I figure it had to be different. Right. I wasn't going to go in there and run and run around the whole ring for 12 rounds. <laughs> Man, I can punch. I ain't doing that shit. That's a lot of work. He likes to look pretty and dance and run around the ring. That's a lot of work, man. I'm in there to take care of business. Yeah. And I knew to become different, I would have to get knockouts. Cause it's like baseball. Everybody loves hit, but people love home runs. So that might go get those home runs, get that check. I might get a damn look pretty. Man, I got time for that, man. Get your ass in there, man. Let's be in the belly fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you was punishing, man. Now, how many how many belts did you get? Uh, I got about four. I got four belts. Am I pleased with my career? Nah, I'm not really pleased with my career. I mean, I could have done, done a, lot, a lot more. But that wasn't my goal, become world champion. My goal, become known for myself. Hector Camacho Jr. I didn't become world champion. I didn't want that drama. I didn't want that problem. Because I see in my father's life. I just had people only on top of my father. Sucking him, sucking him. And the minute he turned his back, they talk shit about him. I didn't yeah, want that in my life. I seen all that. So yeah, I know what the yeah. fake love is about. I didn't want fake love. I'm from New York City. When we walk around with real, we walk around with our feet on the ground where it's real. We don't, we don't, we don't. If you're from New York, if somebody wear the wrong sneakers, nah, he, he, nah, he, she kind of funny. That's how we are. Yeah. That's how we in New York. We about style. That's how we are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I see a lot of fake stuff in boxing. I said, you know what? That's not for me, man. So I'm going to become, become 
Me, Hep Kamata Jr., that's what I did when my father was on my undercard on HBO. That's my championship fight. That's when I became champion. Wow. That's big right there, champ. Yo, like, be real, man. People like Macho Camacho, Muhammad Ali, Floyd Mayweather, Chico Elena, they born every hundred years. Fighters are born every day, but those type of fighters are not born every day. Yeah, right. So who am I going to fool? I'm going to my father. Who am I going to fool? Nah. Right. I took that shadow and made it a light for me. Yeah. It's a shadow because the big shoes are filled. But I made that shadow a light. I let it work for me. That's right. It wasn't going to dictate me. Nah, it wasn't going to dictate me. Fight this guy, fight that guy. Nah, 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 nah. You ain't doing that to me. So what was your record before you, before you uh, stopped, um, stopped fighting for a little while? Well, when I lost my, my hunger, I was 35 and no, walking to the Legacy Team Leha fight. I was fighting 10 rounds. I wasn't world champion. I was fighting 10 rounds. I was getting paid world championship money, 600000 a fight. I was getting paid good money. Um, boxing got funny after the Leha fight. Because going into the Leha fight, people were saying already, wow, Camacho Jr. might become better than his father. Oh, wow, Camacho Jr., the truth. He's just like his father, but he punches more. He punches harder. So yeah. everybody had all eyes on me. I may become the next Latino superstar coming out. Not Cotto, not Trina and me. I was the next superstar. Right. And when that layout fight happened, like at that hip, I got cut. You stupid to cut right now. I got cut and went to the scorecard to give me the win. The next day, the New York Daily News, I seen a big write up. Camacho's a coward. When I seen that, that shit broke my heart. I said, you know what, boxing ain't shit. <laughs> I should have known better. Because it was yeah, in my yeah. father's in my father's career. When he fought Aaron Rosario, Matt Square God, he got hit one time. The whole boxing was out. Camacho, Camacho started running. He's a coward. They, they, they flip on you. It happens with Mayweather. When you great and you good, they quick to point the finger. Mayweather, all right, Mayweather, Mayweather fight bums. He picks his opponent. Hey, Mayweather's good. It happens to Canelo now. Canelo's great. But we always find a way to, nah, he ain't this, he ain't that. That's just boxing. Yeah, man, I wonder why they do that, man. No loyalty in the game, man. That's boxing, man. We feel the same with LeBron James. No matter how good LeBron James is, he cried too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> My man cried too much, man. No matter how good he is, it's yeah, just the facts yeah, of life. Right. I could deal with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. a realistic. I could deal with that. Well, I can't deal with the fake shit. Exactly. Exactly. So you're making a comeback, man. So um, who was who was some of the fighters you would, would mind getting in the ring with, man? That's out right now, man. If I'm going to do something... I want y'all to do this on a bigger scale. I think bigger, and I think that's out of box than most. I'm thinking about Floyd Mayweather exhibition. Family affair. His father was Floyd Mayweather Sr. His uncle was, you know, Roger Mayweather. My father, Macho Camacho. My uncle with Felix Camacho. It makes sense. Exhibition Camacho Mayweather or Camacho de la Hoya or Chavez Sr. Camacho Jr. So I'm out there for the business aspect of it at my age. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to chase no young boys. I don't know. I got to <laughs> leave those young boys alone, man. I ain't no problem with them. <laughs> I'm going to chase history. I'm going to chase great things. I right. established the name already. Yeah. What about, what about a Manny Pacquiao show? I would love that, too. Ain't no big names. It, 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 it's a challenge, and that's what we live for, to challenge. When you good, you want to be the best. You face whatever. You go through it to become the best. And, and, and it's a challenge if you accept it. I accept that. I dare you become great. Hell yeah, it's in my genes. Hell yeah. Give me three months, four months. I'll be ready. I'll show up. You know what I liked about you always, man? When, when you was in your boxing career, you ain't dodged nobody, man. When there was a big fight, you took the fight. Yeah, no matter how, how big he is, yeah. massive fight that I shouldn't take. I fought guys at 168. I fought guys that I shouldn't do it. But I want to fight. I'm a fighter. I ain't dodging nobody. I'm a fighter. Right. I proved myself. Yeah, you did. Yeah, if you I did. lose, then hey, fuck it. I'll come back. The real brothers get back up. You know what I'm saying? You don't stay down. We get back up. That's it. Anything even in life. Life is a fight. We get knocked down. Get back up. Keep fighting. You still look young, man. You, like, you don't I try to, man. I try to. Let, no, I try to, man. I don't party. I don't break night. I'm a home cat. The most I do is probably on you know, CBD, smoke up over here and there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, that's nothing. I, I'm in the cannabis business. I'm in the business stuff. So, I mean, I try to keep myself young, man. I stay, I, I stick to my dean and my faith. I'm a Muslim. I don't do more than four things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I keep myself young, man. That's and my beautiful wife. I don't stress life right now. Yeah, man. I'm happy for you, man.
Sound real good, man. You know. You want to sound happy? Cause you're, I, I and you. Let's be real. Ninety percent of fighters in boxing, they retire broke. We retire with no money. We have no retirement plan. We have shit. So I hustle outside the ring to keep the name alive. If I can capitalize, I can maximize off the name outside the ring. And I got things, got beautiful things going on. Good investors going outside the ring. I got cannabis deal. I got my own TV show coming. I got my books. I stay active outside the ring. I try to keep my name relevant. You know, that's something that I, 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 I um, I take upon myself to do that my father failed to do. So for his mistakes, I learned. Yes. yes. So you know, I, I said, let, let me work outside the ring. Cause when all said and done, when I say bye bye to boxing, what I have left is what I build. Smart, bro. People don't want macho, come macho. Must have left a lot of money behind. He left me a legacy, a name that I could make money from. That's what I'm looking at. I don't care what he left. That's not my money. That's his money. He hustled for that money. That's not me. Mm -hmm. But he left me a name to capitalize on. That's what I'm doing outside the ring. It's capitalizing. I'm yeah. in that position. So I might as well for this ain't before they close the curtain on my ass. You know why you too old? That's it for you. It happens, man. <laughs> exactly. Yo, but right, he left that he left that name. That's a big name, man, over there. And uh, they got a, a mural or anything up over there? In Puerto Rico? I know in Harlem we have something. Spanish Harlem we have a couple of things. Um, he was born in Puerto Rico, but pops in New York, man. We New Yorkers, man. New York, in, 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 on the east side, they got something up with them on it? They put a little mural. They do little things on him. I'm actually pushing now. I'm pushing the city right now to get a streaming name that his name. Hector Camacho away. I think he deserve it. Yeah. I think we deserve it. I think that that's a sign of um of anything possible. Like again, he came out the projects. It's Spanish home, New York City, a drug infested city in the 80s, gang. He came out from there, he made it to the White House. That's the American dream. Yeah. So having a name, a shit under his name, it, it just a reminder of how great he was. It just a reminder of anything is possible. He came from Johnson Project, he made it to the White House. It's just a reminder. I think it's important to have a name out there. Yeah. Yeah. He the biggest thing that came, that I know, and I've been around for a little while, coming from that, the east side over there, bro. Yeah, man, he's one of them. He's one of them. We, you know, we have the boys on the east side, man. We have the boys, man. You know, like, hey, hey, look at Jim Jones, man. I mean, look, look at Cam. Yeah. You know, if we come out of the east, and New York is better. You know, uptown Harlem, Spanish Harlem, Harlem Tito, is known for making that money. Tito? We know about making that money. That's what we are. We hustlers. We about making that money. Exactly. Exactly. So, when you think, when you predict, you might come back, make you come back, man. Now, I'm not going to fool myself and go in there for the money. I'm getting good offers to come back and fight. But it's not about the money, man. It's about the legacy. Because what, 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 what is it worth if I, if I bust my chops? I'm doing books. I'm doing movies. I'm doing documentary. And I go to and I get smacked. Right. It does nothing for me. It just hurt my legacy. So I want to make sure that I'm going there when I'm ready. You're gonna put that no rush. Right. Get in shape and be ready. Exactly. Mentally, you know. So let's, um, so who you signed to now, man? Who's working with? I didn't sign with a promotion company. I'm a free agent, but I signed with a management team called um, Eruption Boxing. Green Leggy, a female, uh, a female management team to help me outside the ring, help me out inside the ring, outside the ring with businesses. But um, I'm open. I'm free right now. I'm listening to all promoters. I'm talking to all promoters. I'm saying what's the best offer if I do come back. It gotta make sense, and that's just where I'm at right now. You know, I'm in a position I could, I could pick and choose right now. Thank God. I think that Mayweather fight would be nice for you, man. It gives me a chance, you know, yeah. to prove something, to do something, to do something that never been done. They put him on his ass. <laughs> um, we all look for those special kind of fights, you know, and, and style make fights. Right. For an excellent fighter, his right. boxing IQ is high. So to compete with Floyd, you gotta have a good boxing IQ to compete with Floyd. And I come from a from a genius fighting style, from genius DNA. So I believe it's a good matchup. And it, it makes sense. Camacho, Junior, Fred, Mayweather, Jim, it makes a lot of sense. Two big names in boxing. Yeah, that'll be hot. That'll be hot, dude. That's gonna sell tickets, man. In New York City, that'd be a nice thing. That's gonna sell tickets. Him, Chavez's father. It, it doesn't matter. I don't even look at, I don't even have to go on Chavez's father. I've been trying to fight Chavez Jr., Chavez, Omar Chavez, the brother, the uncle. If they got an uncle Chavez, a Marvin Chavez, bring her ass too. I want my revenge. Any Chavez. Yeah, you ready to get that money? I'll give you call. Miriam Chavez, give me her ass. They owe me. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, what about Zab Judah now, man? That cat can't. That jab my man, man. Big shout to Zab Judah. Now, Zab beat me in the, in the Olympic trials. The fight that I thought I won. Throughout the years, me and Zab been close. We always talk. That's my brother, man. I respect Zab. Like I would tell Zab, Zab, you're a legend. You came out from Brooklyn. You came a long way, my brother. I mean, it's not about love and respect, but that's a fight that I always wanted. Since the amateur days, I always wanted a Zab Judah fight. I always hit him up for a New York fight. That's a big New York fight. But as you know, Zab came back in the ring and caught a concussion in one of those fights. And, you know, I guess he laid off a boxer now. But Zab already did his deal already. Zab, Zab is legend. He already did, did his thing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, say bye to the game. Up. Enjoy the game. Zab a Brooklyn legend. That's true. That's facts. Yeah, Brooklyn legend. He did it his way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rough street. If you see Zab on the hip hop videos, man, shout out to my nigga Zab, man. <laughs> <laughs> Zab out the side, man. Yeah, Zab Brooklyn, man. All day. So All day, Brooklyn. What's up, that book you got? I seen a little children's book or something? Yeah, I did a children's book back when my father passed away, man. How that came about was that, you know, my father passed away. I got two daughters. At that time, I didn't know how to explain to them about a passing, that their grandfather's dead. Like, how do you explain to a kid what's a death? I mean, the kids deal with death every day, whether it be their family, they, 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 their favorite dog or a bird or a pet they have or a family member, a human. Kids deal with the death every day. So I decided to write a book for my daughter, therapeutic. It was therapeutic for me. I wrote, I laughed, I cried. It was good. Explain to the kid, the book's about a death. So it's called Macho Dad. My father was like a superhero. So my father went to, you know, he went out to the sky. A big storm was coming. He went to save the island from the storm. So he went up in his cape and he flew up to the storm. He never came back. Just the cape came flying back down. Mm. So I grabbed the cape and I hold his legacy to this day. Wow. So he's explaining when somebody passed, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're a junior, you hold that legacy. Yes. So that's what the book's about. Going forward, grinding, pushing forward. Regardless, yeah. I'm a Muslim. If you believe in God, you pass, you go into a better place. Yeah. So yeah, that just part of just part of therapeutic, you know what it was. And it gave me opportunity to become an author. That's something else that, you know, yo, I didn't finish school. I come from the hood. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm grinding on books. Yeah. I'm in the corporate world. Anything yeah. possible, man. Anything Talk possible. Talk about it, bro. That's right. Anything possible. You put your mind to it, you can do it. It's just a dream. Put it on paper. I write a lot. I got a lot of diary. I write everything. My thoughts. That's to keep me going. Yeah. Put on paper, dream big, and go. Ain't that possible? Yeah. Look at Snoop. Snoop is commentating boxing fights. Snoop Doggy Dog smoking <laughs> blood on TV, living the life, living the American life. Yo, he running around with Marcus Stewart. That's his home girl and all that. You heard me? <laughs> huh? Yeah. A dude, a hustler from the West. Anything possible? It's right in front of our eyes. Society, we live in a time that acceptance is okay. You can smoke weed and be happy on TV. You can be gay and be happy. They won't judge you. We accept it. It's the right time. And it's about acceptance, not about marketing yourself. Exactly. That's facts. So did they, did they come at you yet for to do your story? I know we got your pop story. Did they come at you? Yeah, come at you I, I'm story? actually working now. I'm working now with um Lover. And Darren Love, we signed up with Fire Network. We're doing a TV series of my life. They have to come out your junior story. Um, 13 episodes. It's going to be dope, man. Because you got two stories in one. You got the life of my father through my eyes. Mm -hmm. What I seen growing up. Then you got the life of what I experienced. Right. So I'm here bringing, to, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing a message to the youth. And to people from the heart. That ain't possible. People think... I was born on a silver platter because my father Macho Camacho. Nah, man. I come from the government cheese, man. Right. I come from the big cheese, the blocks. That's yeah, what we yeah, come from. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Eastside, bro, I know. Yeah, so, you know, we, we can't, you know, the struggle, the beauty of the struggle, man. I can look back and I say, damn, I came a long way. That's how I'm always in New York City. When I'm on downtown, I go back to the hood, man. It just doesn't mind the way I came from. Yeah. I came from a long way. I come from a place you're not supposed to make. You got to be special to make out of Harlem. You got to be special to make out of Brooklyn. You got to be special to make out of projects. It's not given. Right. Just going home, just going back to the old neighborhood will, will ground you, man, make you appreciate where you're at now, man. Real quick. Over you know, when I was small, when I was living in, in, in 112 Madison Avenue, next to Tav, you know, my father used to take care of us. I had to get a monthly salary. So anytime I had money, 
I would go ahead and buy ice, the quarter ice or quarter water. I used to buy all the kids in the building quarter water, everybody. I go back now to New York City, I still do the same thing. Cause that's who that's what made me. Right. That keeps me grounded. Yes. yes. That's what's up. That's real. Yeah, a lot of dudes when they come from a certain neighborhood, they don't go back. You know what I'm saying? The fact that you going back and just, you know, check on the neighborhood, just, just to walk around your old neighborhood, man. I understand why too, man. You know what I'm saying? Good thing nowadays, man. Hate is free. The hate is free. So I understand if you don't go back no more. You know? I personally I have to go back. I'm from there. Right. I go back let the people know it's yeah, possible. You could do it. I go back to uplift people. I don't go I don't go back to show off. That's a big difference. Right. You don't see me going back in my in my M five or M three. I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I let them relate to me. I can relate to them. Exactly, exactly. So, when you come back, what weight class you trying to go to, man? That's the good one. That's what I want to make sure I take my time to get myself in shape. Look, I want the best chances of winning. I don't go in there fight. I want 65. You got, got off the guy, Triple G. These boys are big, Canelo. These boys are big and strong. Yeah. I want the best chances. I'm not going to mess up my legacy. Over a couple of meals, or a couple, of, a couple hundred thousands. I won't do that. Yeah. I won't mess up my father's legacy doing that. I've done enough messing up. Not taking my career serious. Right. But if I'm coming back to the ring, I'm 41. I'm not gonna get fucked. Fuck, I'm get hurt. I right? make sure I'm in, I'm in my best. And to be my best, I could bully guys. I say what's well, 147. Yeah, I've been able to bully people. Right. 154. I've been able to bully guys. Right. I'm not just walking around big anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you got the heavy hand too. Heavy hand, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm always there, man. You know, I'm always there. You know, I get in condition. The condition's the hard part, you know? Yeah. I, I'm going back. I'm looking up. I'm thinking of becoming a vegan. Start eating well. You know, I'm getting eating better. I'm getting older, man. We got to take care of health. Yeah. This fool out there is killing us, and we don't see it. I know. We just munching, munching, munching. So I'm trying to get back on my nuts. I'm trying to get back on my greens, on my fruits, and live the alkaline life. You know what I'm saying? I want to live some years, man. I want to live. Exactly. <laughs> But you talking 41, bro, I see 30, you know what I mean? You got that, you still must still young, boy, man. You know what keeps me going? What keeps me going is that my, um, George Foreman became world champion at 46. Mm -hmm. Bernard Hopkins at 48, at 49. Hop, yeah. I still believe. Yeah. yeah. I still believe I can do it. Yeah. That people have done it. Yeah. I believe I can do it. And, and Mike didn't come back to, to, to fight no big fight, but look how good he looked, though. Right? Mike's a good example. Both guys, they both took it, they took it serious. They took care of their body. They both performed at the late 50s. That's, that's rare you see on athletes. And they both look good. No matter if Roy Jones hitting, holding, he looked good for his age. You see the speed. Mike Tyson, too. And just to get down the way and put a show on, perform, Congrats to both guys, man. Yeah. I know there's hard work behind that. It's all about wanting to do something and discipline. That's all it boils down to. Mm -hmm. yeah, how you feel about that fight that just happened? Um, the kid from Philly and the kid from Texas. What's the name? Oh, not Canelo, no? Who? Not the Canelo fight, no? No, not Canelo, the other dude, man. Um, Garcia, no. Diaz Garcia? <laughs> Garcia versus versus the guy on Errol Spence. No, the kid that, that from te from Texas, Errol Spence. Right. Yeah, he for who? He for Mickey Garcia. Yeah, yeah. How you feel about that fight? You know, right now people want to see the Crawford versus Spencer fight. I think Spencer, what you call a complete fighter, he fights. His A game is sharp. His basic boxing game is sharp. Keep his hands up. He's a big boy. He's a hot boy. And he's talking about Earl Spence. Earl Spence can fight Mayweather fits when they were sparring. Mm. The kid is special. He's about the best welterweight fighter we have right now. Mm. They're trying to match versus Crawford, which is a big fight. He want to fight Canelo. I think I think that kid Spence is a damn good fighter. Mm. That's the future of boxing. Mm. He's gave a clock to him. Yeah, yeah. That a cracks him, and he yeah. went straight to fight Danny Garcia, a tough fighter. That's his, that's just a lot about him. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a that was one of the best fights I've seen in a while. You know, I like 
old school fighters. They don't pick and choose their fighter. He's getting a car accident. Let me fight the best. We need that. Yeah. In a boxing world, it's kind of messed up right now. And thanks to your favorite boxer, Floyd Mayweather. He got man, he got the boxing game messed up. It became a money grab. It worked for him, so I can't knock that. But boxing became a money grab. Yeah. In a time where people don't fight each other right now. Let, let, let's let the fight brew. Let us you get old. They pick your opponent. Doing the boxing, I know my father's time, they fought the best. Yeah. Different errors. Somebody just asked, um, Ludi, 234, are you thinking about making a comeback? They probably just came on, man. Tell them about your... Hey, Ludi, you know, I, I would like to, man, but it's, it's a lot of work, man. It got to make sense. At my age, it has to make sense. It got to... Fight the top guys. I'm not gonna prepare myself to fight a Louis Armstrong or 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 or, 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 Dane or Danny from 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 Texas. I gotta fight some big names to, to wake me up to motivate me. But the comeback is more about getting the weight than getting the shit than it's a fight. I'm born a fighter. The fight is easy. It's making the weight, the hard work, the sacrifice, the daily grind, doing the gym every day, taking no punches, sparring. That's a lot of work, man. That's a lot of toll on the body. I'm getting older, but I can't run every day at 5 in the morning, 600 miles up the mountains. Yeah, when I was 20, 22, it's easy. Yeah. But at this age, we got to think about it. Yeah. It's, it's about working smarter, not harder. So, you you know, it's about having a good team behind you. It, it takes time if I go back in the ring. I might do it maybe summertime going back. I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm correct. Because like I said, the worst thing can happen now, I put the movie out, the documentary, my book, my life, my TV series, and I fuck around getting knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> that can't happen, you know what I'm saying? So I'll make sure I'm correct. Nah, it ain't. They're going to ruin everything. Yeah, I'll make sure I'm correct, man. So yeah, yeah. it's not just a matter of going back and then making a comeback. It's about making the right plan, the right strategy. There'll be a reason for the comeback. Exactly. Exactly. But if he comes back, it's a bit, it's a business. You know what I mean? But Camacho come back if he come back, y'all gonna hear about it. It's gonna be a big fight and he's gonna be in top shape. Until then, there's no set date and time, but you know, he on his grind. That's what he do. You know? As long as I'm happy with my man, my man Glenn from Europe. That's my guy right there. He's online. Glenn and we talk about Glenn Warborn, my guy. He flies every year from the UK to the Bronx, New York, to see my father's grave. Every wow. year, on his own expense. Since my father passed away, he been hitting me up every year. He's a big Macho fan. I finally met the guy two years after two years after he called me up. And he came to New York City. He met my grandmother. He hangs out at my father's apartment and my family, my aunts. He brought his family ready. That's what Macho Town's about. That's what I love is about. It's a worldwide love my father left behind. A legacy. We got a guy like Glenn Warbaugh, a good, a good friend of ours. Friends of the family ready from the UK. He flies every year to visit us in New York City. Yeah, my man, that's uh, priceless, man. The love that's is what's real. Up. That's what's up, man. Respect, respect. Where, where's your father come way back? Uh, I'm gonna say St. Raymond, so I think St. Raymond. I don't, I don't go to it, I stay away from that. The day I go to visit my father in the grave, that's when he's really gone, right? Right, so right, I prefer right. not to go there and show up. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't go, he's still, still alive, it's still macho time. The day exactly. I go see him in the grave, he's gone, so I stay away from that. Yeah, we gotta get something in the hood, man, that got his name up there, man. They gotta do that, man. Yeah, you push on that, you push on that, man. You push on that, like I said, man, you know, I'm in boxing, I just for the comeback to help boxing. Maybe we see a much time promotion down the line. Help the fighters. Yeah, yeah. St. Raymond. He said St. Raymond's your man, Glenn. Yeah, St. Raymond's. He knows. That's the Glenn of Europe. He knows. <laughs> you know, I talked to my guy, Glenn. He knows every fight of my father. I said, Glenn, what fight was my father with his kind of pants? He's the Bible. He knows all the information. All the information. So let me ask you a question. Let's talk about your pops real quick, real quick. What was his most memorable fight? Who do you think it was? Who do you think it was? His best fight, to me, it was two of his losses. When he showed me who the hell he was. He showed how boys was. The first fight was with Evan Rosario mm -hmm. in New York City, 1986. I wanted to sign him in with him. Rosario was a puncher. That was the first time he ever got shook in his career. Right. And he fought back and he won. The second time he impressed me with the Chavez fight, he took a pounding, but he held his balls in there and fought it to the end. And yeah. after the fight, he went out to party. Beat up, eyes swollen, he went out to party. That's when he showed me he's a macho man. There you go. There you go. Those are two fights I'm proud for. I can hit my chest and wow. 
And by the way, the challenge fight, they sold out 19,000 fans. 19,000 tickets they sold out in two weeks. Wow. It's macho time. Macho time, man. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. We you left a legacy behind. We're going to keep that legacy rolling, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's Not easy. The guy that people go all the talk shit. Ah, oh, yeah. Your father Camacho. Yeah, he, he was born with money. Nah, man. It's the grind, it's the hustle, man. That's what it's about. Like you told it me. It's harder for us, we juniors. No matter what the hell we do, we never become better than our father. No matter what we do, people all go say, you know what? You always give me your father to this. So we got to roll with that kind of legacy in our back. We got to roll with that shadow. Yeah. When you pick up and keep running, give me that cross. I'll roll with it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hey, but listen, man. Yo, tell anybody want to get at you or whatever, man. Give them your links, man. They want, you know. You can always find me here, IG, Happy Camacho 3. You can also find me on Facebook. I'm a Facebook fanatic. But soon I'll be over my own webpage. You can go to my link, go to my page. I'll be interacting more. About some vaccine things, you know. Tell us a little bit more about them. But right now, find me IG, find me Facebook. It's still Macho Time, man. All day long, man. Macho Time. Y'all want to thank you for taking time out your busy schedule, bro. Nah, anytime, brother, man. Anytime I talk to somebody like you that's real, man, that can relate to what I'm talking about, it's a plus for me, brother. It's my pleasure anytime, brother. You yeah, the voice of the streets right now. Exactly. Don't real, you know what I'm saying? Yes, the voice of the streets, man. Yes, so, sir. Yes, sir. That's what it is. We definitely going to connect because, you know, I'll be talking to, um, you know, Shout out to my man Robert Jackson too, man. My man Robert Jackson, keep me informed, keep me busy. Who we'll helped me connect interview with you? Big shout out, man. There it is, there. It's my time. I appreciate you, man. Shout out to my Yo, sponsors, you, Mark Craft, Mark Schwartz, everybody. It's still my time. Twenty twenty one, we back. There it is. And the Macho Man is back. I know we ain't going nowhere. Exactly. I'm my brother. Job, bro. We out. We out.